Welcome to Haxby Shed. Earlier this week, I repaired the support for one of the big trusses in my garage roof. So it's a bit of civil engineering rather than mechanical engineering. Perhaps it won't get so many views, but even so, it's real life. I hope you find it useful. This is my garage roof. And you can see how that truss beam is just pulling out of the wall slightly. Now it's been a very long time since this was painted. I, I have no clue when it was done, but certainly not in the last 20 years anyway. And you can just see if I zoom in, how that support block is just coming out of the wall very slightly. And you can maybe see where the beam was painted up to the wall. And there's maybe, I don't know, four millimeters of movement, but it's certainly pulling that block out a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chop away um, some of that brickwork at the top, just under the eaves there. And I want to make sure that that joist cross beam is tied in to the wall plate that runs along the top of the wall. I'm not worried about this. I've just been keeping an eye on it for a long old while. And it's probably time I just uh, made a repair. To give you some idea, this is about 9 feet or 2.7 meters off the floor. Anyway, I'm going to chop out a bit of this and a bit of this just to see what's going on behind here. I've chopped away some of the cement work around where that truss goes into the wall and I've discovered that the wall has moved away from us about 1 inch, 25 mil, over many, many years. But in doing so, it's pulling out that supporting block that sits underneath that truss beam. And also that truss beam has dropped about half an inch. It is cut to go underneath the wall plate, but it's not tied to the wall plate. So what I've done is I've used two old washing line poles, jacked them up, blocked them up on, on some wood blocks, raised the truss beam about half an inch, I mean, there may be dirt in between the truss beam and the wall plate, which is stopping me lifting it, you know, fully where it came from. And now I've got those supported, I'll do a bit more work underneath that truss beam and find out how I can uh, remake that support. Again, I'm not particularly worried about this. These things happen with old buildings. I knew I was keeping those washing line bolts for something. Mm. It's still leaving a gap of about half an inch there between the joist and the wall plate. Vertically, that is. But I can't do anything about that now, I don't think. Everything will have settled. It's a big, heavy roof. So we'll just go for it as it is, I think. Now I need to take some of this away and see what's going on. Wish me luck with that. I hope these are solid enough. Mmm. Nothing wrong with this. <laughs> Get along, what are we doing? Some work going on next door, which is what that nail gun sound is all about. Hmm, this will be all right, he says. Yes. Yeah. What I need to do is to find out where are you? I need to find out how far this goes into the wall. Right. Ooh, look. Okay, I can see the beam goes halfway through the wall. It's a nine inch wall, double brick, no cavity. Yes. So actually there's plenty of support here. This section just needs remaking. It's all a bit frightening to look at, but actually, I'm not worried, <laughs> honestly. Mm. Anyway, we'll get on with this, <laughs> get it done before anything falls off somewhere. Yeah, okay.
I've mixed up a bit of mortar. Now I need to say, I'm not a builder, a bricklayer or anything. This is just DIY level. But what I've made is four of sand, one of cement and half of lime. Now I do know you're not supposed to create a bond which is stronger than the wall. If you do put lime in and you put too much in, it starts to shrink and crack, I've found. But if you're using lime, you don't need to use a plasticizer because that does the job anyway and it makes it nice and smooth. So next I'm going to wet the wall. I've already blown it clean, as you know. And then uh, I'm going to put in a couple of blocks into the back of the wall, I'll show you, before we put that piece of wood across the front. So this is just water. Better to wet all this and it'll adhere better. I've just cut those two blocks which will go furthest in under the truss back against the wall. I've screwed them together. I'm just going to put a bit of wood preservative on them because Willy Woodworm puts in an appearance around here now and again. I'm sorry if my microphone was tapping against the ladder earlier on. This is uh, real life stuff, it's not studio made, so uh, sometimes those things happen, sorry. These alone would be enough to hold that beam actually. We're pretty safe once those go in. That nail gun's going next door again, spoiling my production. There we are, those are in now, right against the back wall. Well, it's all one wall actually, <laughs> but halfway through that wall. Good. There we are. I'll cement them now. Nothing precise about this, but we'll pack it in. The thing about cementing, if you haven't done it, is to pack it in tightly and then it, the water just um, freezes is the wrong word but I don't know it squeezes the water out between the mix and then it just uh, stays in place then if you've been working with cement and it just flops out well that's because you're not pressing it hard enough as you pack it in that's my advice anyway as a non-builder non-professional I'm just test fitting this. Ow, the thumb. Mm, okay. Mr. Nail Gun is at it again. Anyway, that's now packed into place. I'm just going to put a couple of screws through it. Try not to be humming while I'm doing this, which usually spoils my video. All those together. Now I just need to mortar it in. Tell you what, the new battery I put in that lamp is working well. It's been up there for ages. That was a result. If you put your mortar on a board like this and then flatten the mortar, you can just press it straight in then. I know that's a bit of a basic comment for a lot of people, but uh, use it if it's useful to you. Right, that's the essential mortar work done. I can always pretty it up some other time. But what I'm going to do now is put a bracket on the top of that uh, joist beam and tie it to the wall plate. Right then, you see the wall plate, that's that bit of wood that runs along the top of the wall. I've got a bracket here, sorry for the hands, got to do this, there we are, and then I've got these long screws which I'll use into here, and then I've got some decking screws that will go in here. The difficulty always is trying to get your drill in, 
but I'll put these in crossways from the side. I can't really show you what I'm doing, but you can hear it. Trying to get these screws in and of course the drill gets, well, drill screwdriver gets in the way. There we go. Let's try that. There we are. It's not exactly a spectator sport, is it? But we'll get some of the big ones in now into the wall plate. Just talk amongst yourselves while I get this done. Well, after a bit of fighting, all the screws are in. A couple of those great long screws snapped, but I managed to get the heads out and put the screws in in a different direction, but I coated them in grease and they just went in as easy as anything then. Well, I'll let that go off overnight and then I'll tidy up. The beam's not pulling out from anywhere else. There's two beams that go across here, two big beams. So that Here's a story. When I saw these beams, I knew I had to buy this house. Now we were moving up from the south of England and I was working up here and my wife said, why don't you have a look at some houses and then you can give me a short list and I'll choose one or we can choose one together. Well, I was up on the train the first day before I'd seen this house and I spoke to the agent and the agent said, why don't you make an offer? It's a fantastic house. Why don't you make an offer? And I said, well, I've not even seen it yet. And she said, well, that doesn't matter. You can make an offer and we can get the offer agreed subject to viewing. So I said, OK. So we had this ridiculous negotiation because I'd not even seen the place except on the Internet. And we agreed a price and then, I, then, you know, I saw these beams and that was it. We had to have the house. And so my wife said, Did you, was it really nice? And I went, oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> and our daughter was already up here and she said, well, if our daughter likes it, then obviously we'll have it. Well, you know, our daughter was in a difficult position. And the rest is history. Ha, ha, ha.